Okay. All right, simple but eloquent uh, instructions as usual from Arthur Mercani as we take a look at the tail of the tape. Tail of the tape, age obviously the big difference for Rabinella's experience with the amount of boats and of course everything else is relatively uh, even. So we are ready for action here in round number one of this scheduled 12 rounder. Third man in the ring, Arthur Mercani, one of the great names in refereeing history in the world of boxing. And McCullough, as usual, will come straight forward, trying to throw straight shots, I would think, tonight, to offset the wide-swinging Robinales, who has an awkward style, unorthodox, but I believe that that works very much to his advantage. Yeah, hands held high, goes from side to side, and uh, he's working away at Wayne's body. He's got uh, an unusual sort of sweep and hook and style, and we talked about this earlier, pretty much resembles Vizuka Limon in this style, apart from the fact that Limon was a southpaw. Limon probably with a better actual power than Robin Alice, but swinging those kind of punches in the same fashion, we never think it could be effective, but somehow they get in there and they land and they are effective. Robin Alice is not a power puncher necessarily, he wins most of his fights by decisions. He has had eight world championship fights. And he lands a good right to the head of McCullough and follows it up with a left hand to the body. Yeah, Wayne's find it difficult to cope with those body shots from Rabinales. Good body shots. He's started off pretty well to the body. McCullough, once he gets it cranked up here, will begin throwing non-stop punches. Beginning, I think he's just taking a look here, kind of feeling out the style of Rabinales and uh, getting a feel for what Rabinales does. As we mentioned, it's very unusual. Yeah, of course, uh, it's, it's difficult when you start off at a, at a ferocious pace to uh, recline and go into your shell and gives your opponent uh, encouragement. So what he's doing is, as you say, he's just taking a look here, trying to get his, find his range and, and get a look at this awkward style of Robin Alice. There's a good body shot from Robin Alice. Gaddy asking Robin Alice to keep the punches up. McCullough, so talented, charismatic, very entertaining and exciting. 11 of his 12 wins have been by KO. Ranked number three in the world. His last fight was March 19th, the third round KO of Mark Hargreaves in uh, Britain. Yeah, what do you think? He's got a great knack of being able to make you fight at a, at a, a terribly fast pace. Now, I don't know whether uh, Raven is, he's 31 years old, and he's had a lot of hard fights in his time, and Mexicans are all very tough, and they could take a great deal of stick. But when he makes you fight, he really makes you fight at a sustained pace. He's defending pretty well here. The body shots are getting through from Robin Alice, but, but Wayne's uh, keeping his guard up towards his head, keeping him tucked up nice and tight. But uh, this is a good opening round for Robin Alice. He's uh, beginning to get a bit of a, an attack now from McCullough's really starting to pile the pressure on near the end of the round. But he started off pretty well, Robin Alice, and, and Wayne has had a time to have a look at him now. Chance to get a look at this awkward first style. First minute and a half, really rather tentative for McCullough compared to what he normally fights, but now beginning to pick it up as we come to the end of the round. Exactly, right on the bench. <laughs> Welcome back to Prime Championship Boxing, this WBC Bantamweight title elimination fight. Winner of this bout will get a shot at the World Championship. There, Victor Robinales, ranked number one in the world and the former world champion in the bright aqua-colored trunks and Wayne McCullough from Belfast, Northern Ireland in the black. Yeah, a good opening round. I give the opening round to Robinales because of his earlier work. Wayne was uh, pretty subdued, just taking a look at him. You can be sure that he'll open up and start working harder now. He needs to throw straight punches. This guy throws arcing, long, winging punches. He's just got to tuck up nice and tight and try and, as soon as he sees him, he's just got to get off quickly with straight, direct punches. He seemed to surprise McCullough in close with a right-hand uppercut and caught Wayne in the face. But there's those winding up, long, looping, outside punches. It would seem McCullough, of course, would be able to beat the guy to the punch, Barry, simply because he throws punches in a straight line when he comes in, and Robin yeah. throws from the outside. But Robin Alice throws him, Rich, from really unusual angles. Yes. But uh, what, I'm not, what I'm not happy with is with the Wayne is not using his jab enough at the moment. He's just to work his jab. The way to beat these long hook and arc and shots is to work your jab, a snappy jab, and then get up in close, and then back in those close punches. Because 
you either get right on top of Rabanales to stop him getting leverage, or else you keep well, well out of distance. He's winging, he can't afford to hang his chin out like that Wayne. He's got to he's got to tuck up nice and tight when he's on the outside. This is nothing unusual for Rabanales. This is the way he fights all the time. As we talk to you, very awkward, unorthodox, throws looping punches. And McCullough has uh, looked at, studied tapes of Rabanales, so he knew what to expect coming into this fight, because Rabanales is giving him exactly that. Yeah, he just needs to needs to counter punch a bit more. He needs to use a snappy jab and then step to the side or step just back out of range and not hang his chin out because he's been caught again by a long range and right hand from Rabanales. Just needs to get his, his combinations tighter and work off the jab. We mentioned how much of a non-stop puncher McCullough is, but Robin Ollis throws a lot of punches in a fight. Oh, he just right caught up McCullough up. with a right hand, and McCullough just may have been hurt for the first time in his pro career. Backing off, and I think McCullough realizes that he needs a little breather yeah, here he was as he a backs right away. Robin Ollis get his head clear. Landed the clean right, but here the comes right McCullough back. McCullough. Excellent combination by McCullough bouncing yeah. back. Yeah, just needs to tuck up nice and tight. He's, he's, he's a bit loose on the outside here. And he's been caught by Rabinales with that big long uppercut. Interesting that when Wayne got hit with that hard shot, that he had enough presence of mind there, Barry, to back off yeah. and collect himself. Exactly, take a step back and just gather himself. He's uh, he's been got caught too often here. His he's, his defense is still pretty loose, and he's finding this guy very awkward indeed. He needs to bang that right hand over more often. Whack it straight down the pipe and work off the jab too. And it would appear as round number two comes to an end, Barry. That for the first time in his career, McCullough is finding himself behind in a fight. Yes, indeed. I again we give that round to Rabinales because it's uh, just better work with, and he did hurt, he stunned uh, McCullough with a good right uppercut. We might get a look at it here. Long right uppercut, and uh, Wayne, for a second, was stunned, stepped back, and just uh, took control of himself. He just gathered his thoughts, and just took a little bit of a breather, and came back in again. He's just got to be cuter. All right, let's, let's take a look uppercut. at that shot now, Barry. It's a right uppercut, a big wing and right uppercut. Now hit him right on the button there with that shot. Well, he grimaced as soon as he got hit. He was definitely hurt with that right hand. There's a lot of wisdom in that corner. Yeah. As Arthur Mercandy comes in to visit in the corner of Wayne McCullough. But, of course, he's trained by both Eddie Futch and Thel Torrance. That's a couple of very terrific. And, of course, Futch, one of the real legends of boxing. Over in Robin Allis' corner, the very well-respected Nacho Beristain. So these two guys uh, are well taken care of in their corners. But it would appear here as we start round three of this Schedule 12 rounder that Victor Robinales is off and flying. Yeah, he's off at a good pace, and, and uh, he's been able to hurt Wayne in the last round and just take him out of his stride by attacking him with these winging long arcing punches, and, and Wayne just hasn't been able to get together at this stage. He Barry, now this is only the 13th fight for McCullough here, and of course he's coming up against the guy uh, who was experienced in a former champion. Can you recall yourself at all being in a similar situation as you were coming up the ranks against a former champion or a formidable opponent like this, a crossroads type fight? Yes, very much so. I fought a guy called uh, Juan Laporte, and Laporte at that time had just lost the featherweight title to Wilfredo Gomez, and it was very much in the, a, a similar circumstances. The difference being that I had a, probably another year's experience to win, but you know, fighters nowadays develop quicker, especially the lighter weight divisions, and McCullough picked things up pretty fast, but he's finding it really difficult against this guy. McCullough won the NABF championship with a seventh round knockout of Javier Medina back in January. This is a kid who had a long amateur career. He started boxing when he was eight, had 200 fights as an amateur, won 190 of them, appeared in two Olympic games, in 1988 in Seoul, where he lost in the third round to Scotty Olsen, and then in 1992, where he was a silver medalist at Barcelona and a winner of boxing's first, uh, uh, Ireland's first boxing medal in 36 years, which made him, I guess, quite a hero going back. Very much, he's a national hero back home in, in Ireland. And uh, he's, uh, as I say, he's, you know, a, a great deal more experienced as an amateur than I was, so that probably, as I say, levels things up. But it, the professional game is a great deal different. You've got to learn to pace yourself, and especially someone who fights at a ferocious pace like he does. But he's boxing better. He's settling down better in this the third round. And he's picking his punches a bit better. He's tucking up nice and tight. And uh, he's, he's moving in and out pretty well. He's still, of course, got all of his speed. And uh, 
McCullough again has that great advantage of youth at 23 years of age. He'll be 24 in a couple of weeks. So he figures to be able to go a long way. You just got to remember that when he gets out wide like that, he's got to tuck up nice and tight. And this is a much better run from him. He's boxing better. He's nailing Robin Ellis at long last, and he's getting through with straight punches. Yeah, but this guy is so dangerous from, an, from the outside because the punches come from an unusual angle. They come sweeping up like in an uppercut, in an uppercut hook sort of variation. McCullough and was able to land a straight right, though. Quick little combination, and the right hand was the most effective. Well, that's better. He's rolling better, and this is a better round. And welcome back to Prime Championship Boxing. Rich Murata along with former featherweight champion Barry McGuigan. It is round number four of this WBC title elimination bout in the bantamweight division. The former world champion, Victor Robinala, screen left in the aqua trunks. In the black trunks, young, talented Wayne McCullough, an exciting youngster who had never lost a round as a pro coming into tonight's fight, but appeared to drop the first round or two here tonight to Victor Robinala, the former champion. Yeah, he's uh, he's boxing with, a, with with much more finesse now. He's using his uh, his boxing ability a bit better. He's trying to to move in at the right time. He's moving to the side and he's uh, he's thinking about it. You watch what he's hesitating before he attacks in that. That's good because that's what he needs to do. He needs to work on his ex he needs to work on his uh, his timing, his attack, and he needs to vary his attacks because he's inclined to walk straight in. And he's got to remember that when he gets out, pro out wide like this, this guy is really dangerous. He can't hang his chin up in the air. He's got to bang that right hand over more. Just drive the right hand down, turn his elbow up high, and turn it right down to the chin. And, and the, job, the appear, job's working great, too. Yeah, it would appear that he's beginning to get into a little bit of a rhythm with that jab. Has he been, uh, in your mind, a good jabber in, in, as a professional? Well, he's inclined to punch two shorts, which means he, he uh, neglects the jab. But he can jab, and he can box too, this kid. Uh, you know, people don't see that. But in the gym, I've watched him box, and I've watched him uh, move around and do things that, you know, boxers do instead of being always an attacking fighter. On the other hand, Rabinales has always totally disdained the jab. He, he hardly uses it at all. He is throwing everything wide. He likes to throw those hooks with both hands. He doesn't throw your conventional right cross. He throws a hook with the right hand and a hook with the left hand. That's right. Yeah, he throws big, long, winging punches from out. And it's, they're really dangerous. And people say he's not a hard puncher. He is a hard puncher. And watch the way he throws an uppercut. He just puts all his weight behind him. He sort of hooks the arm out wide, and it just travels right up. He's a dangerous guy. Good right hand from McCullough now. He needs to throw that right hand more often. Rabinales won the title as, as McCullough answers back again with the right hand. In interesting fashion, Rabinales won the uh, crown. First, he was given the interim uh, championship. The uh, champion at that time, Yohiro Tatsuyoshi of Japan, was undergoing eye surgery and was going to be out of action for a long time. So the WBC authorized an interim championship fight, and it was won by Victor Rabinales over Yang Hoon Lee. And uh, shortly after that, he did fight the champion, Tatsuyashi, as, as they unified the title, and Robin Ellis was the winner of that bout to become the WBC champion in full. And he made four successful defenses of the crown, and trying to get another title shot and get a victory over McCullough here tonight. End of round four. five of this bantamweight elimination bout between uh, Wayne McCullough in the black trunks and Victor Robinales, the former world champion, in the aqua or light-colored blue trunks. McCullough from Belfast, Northern Ireland, started slow, but uh, Barry would appear in the last couple of rounds beginning to find a rhythm and get himself together a little better. Yeah, he's starting to settle down a bit better. He's uh, He's been hit with good body shots in the first two rounds, and they do have an effect on you in the later rounds, but He's got his act together a bit better. He's picking his punches a little bit better, and he's, his defense is a bit better, too. He's, he's landed a few more blows on Robin Ellis. This guy's impossibly, is possibly, not impossibly hard to land on, but very difficult to land square on because he's punching all of the time. No matter what, what he does, Robin Ellis, he, he brings his right foot in after he throws the right hand. He's, he's the most awkward guy you've ever seen. 
but very effective. Robin Alice, before he won the title, had a previous try at it, and I thought he was uh, the victim of one of the worst uh, decisions I've seen at the forum in many years, is when he was lost a split, very close decision to then champion Greg Richardson in a fight that would fans and media nearly unanimous in agreeing that Robin Alice had not only won, but won easily, and appeared to be a real uh, robbery that night, but Robin Alice still was able to come back and get the world title after that anyway. The great hand from Robin Alice again. And he slipped in that left hand in there too to the chin. Interesting that he's a good inside fighter, even though he, he throws those punches from so wide. Uh, yeah, well, he brings him up all the time, and you know, we were always told, well, I was certainly always told by the, by the American coaches, bring your hands up on the inside, you'll hit something. But, you know, if you put him, put him like, in, into a hook, well, that's a very low blow oh, ball by Robin Alice. And uh, Marcani's not going to even give him a warning. He is taking the point away with that. He thought that was flagrant enough to deduct a point. Well, when you're hitting the cup protector, if it's up on top, it, it doesn't hurt you, but if you hit underneath the cup protector, that's a really so. It's really so. I don't have to tell you that. It's uh, it can be really so. The second that hook by Robin Alice drives McCullough back and stops his momentum momentarily. That's better work on the inside from McCullough. He's got to throw those punches, as I say, in shorter bus bursts, and he can't hang can't hang out when. when uh, He's delivering those blows because he can get nailed with a counter punch. Look Again, at the strange angles that Robin Alice is throwing those yep. punches from. Yeah, Wayne's just got to be tight on the inside and not get caught when he's when he's when he's pulling out from combinations. You know, I think you could watch tape after tape of this fight, as uh, this fight at Robin Alice, as McCullough has, uh, Barry. But until you get into the ring with him, probably yep. you're still not quite sure what you're going to get from him. That was a good shot by McCullough to end the round. <laughs> nice punch in the way going by McCullough, although Robin Alice had been rallying before that. Yeah, well, with the deduction from uh, uh, from that low blow, it, it has to be uh, McCullough's round, but very close. Uh, the deduction of the point sorted it out for me. But again, Wayne just trying to pace himself a little bit better here. He knows this guy's going to be going a bit, and uh, he's a difficult guy to pin down, a difficult guy to subdue. If you're scoring along with us, if you thought Robin Alice won that round, 10-9, uh, uh, then you would deduct a point from him and make it a 9-9 round. If, if you thought that McCullough won the round, you would score a 10-9, then deduct a point, and it would be a 10-8 round. Here's Robin Alice and some good work in there by Rob Robin, Robin Alice. Alice. Yeah, you see, again, look at those punches, long winging, and he pulls them up. And here we see this low blow, look. Uh, oh, Ooh, no doubt that's about pretty that. low, yeah. He's uh, going to be a soprano. <laughs> Six. This is also, as we've mentioned many times, the AWBC uh, title elimination, but also the NABF championship, which McCullough owns, is on the line. The left fight. hook from and Robin, Robin Alice. Alice tagged him with that left hook coming out here to start Robin round six. Hit him on the bridge of the nose with that as he turned away from a, again an unusual angle. This guy is one awkward so and so to fight. This. Uh, might be a close uh, fight as it goes along in terms of the scoring. I thought Robin Alice won the last round, but with the point deducted, that would make it a 9-9 round on uh, my scorecard and end up being even. Again, as I said, without repeating myself, Wayne has either got to be close, either got to be closer or further away. He can't exchange from from too, from too far away or, or from too. Uh, from too close up, but he's got to be either right in on, on his head on his chest or, or right outside a punching distance. This guy can reach, you see what he does is he steps right in with his punch. You see this here, he actually steps up on top of you. So he cuts down the distance between you and, and himself. Robin Alley, as I'm talking about, Wayne's a good, lands a good right hand there. Just straight punches for this guy, that's where he's got to land. Fella leaning in now. Can he win this fight with the jab? Oh, good body shot from, from uh, Robin Alice. And McCullough, if he utilizes that jab, now there's the typical McCullough combination. That's yeah. what we normally see from him, but the first minute of this round, he was basically trying to just jab. Yeah, good right he's hand beginning again. To, he's beginning Left to hook. pick it up. 
and showing some motion there as well as McCullough. See, when he pulls out, he, this is uh, something that he learned, he learned with experience. When you pull out from a guy like this, you never keep your hands low. You've got to kick him up, tuck him up, tuck him up nice and tight. Body shots from Abanales are pretty hurtful. Robin Alice, 31 years old. It would be interesting to see if he wears down as the fight goes along here tonight. This has been fought at a, at a pretty hectic pace, so there's every reason that Robin Alice will, will wear down, but he's tough tough this guy, very hard indeed. Wayne lands a good right hand. Yeah, and it fell to the left, so it was a nice little bit of combination work by McCullough. jab attempt by Robin Alas. So his long uppercuts out of the dangerous punches. Nice left hook by Robin Alas coming off of the ropes and now McCullough with a rally to end the round. Bringing his fans up off their seats here in the Mark Edis Arena. Difficult round to call there. Both fighters had their moments. Wayne McCullough getting a good talking to from Eddie Fudge. You gotta be patient. There's a the thing in this game you gotta learn is perseverance. You've got to be careful with a guy like Robin Alley's, you gotta tuck up nice and tight, stay on the inside, and close down the distance. Don't give him room to wing in those long arcing punches. And when you're on the outside, you gotta throw straight right hands. Straight right hands. His right hand. You see how difficult this guy is to hit? Slips onto the left hook, McCullough comes back with a good right hand. Bang, that's more like it. Yeah, right but hand from McCullough. McCullough starting to make his presence really felt in there and, and being able to get Rabinala's attention with some of those shots now. Absolutely, yeah. McCullough though, you know, he just keeps on working. Non-stop worker. Yeah, and uh, you know I like the fact that he's uh, he's held a little back here. You know we're now entering the seventh round, and uh, this is new territory for him. He beat uh, Javier Medina in the seventh round, but this guy doesn't look like he's going to go for a long time, and he, he may have to go the full whack here with him. So he's just trying to set the pace for Fuller and be able to have something left in the later stages. And that's that's good work for him. He's using his head. He's thinking. But this guy's so dangerous, isn't he? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Uh, not only dangerous, he, he has come here to fight. There's no question about that uh, uh, as well, Barry. And, you know, the one thing I've in, that I've gotten in living in Los Angeles, calling fights there for several years, is a very healthy respect for the Mexican fighters because yeah. they show up to fight. Yeah, well, this guy's in great shape, 31 years old or not. Uh, he's, he's prepared himself admirably for this occasion he was ready to fight in may and the fight was postponed so he's had lots of time to get ready robin Alice has not fought since november a 10 round decision went over juan soto i would wonder is is that an advantage or is that good for a guy who he oh there's a nice right, right, right hand from McCullough. McCullough. good shot but good right double cut to the body from from robin Alice. Is it better for a guy at uh, Robin Alice's age, you think, to take a few months between fights well, or to continue at, to fight? Uh, at this stage in his career, it's better. The, the long rest will not do him any harm at all. He's beginning to blow a bit here, Robin Alice, and, and this is where Wayne can come on strong. But the, the distance between fights at this stage doesn't really make a difference. In fact, it, it's better for Robin Alice if he takes a break. Good right hand for Robin Alice. Wayne come back with a right hand himself. Good right hand to the body from Wayne. That's good stuff from him. It's not surprising to see uh, McCullough mixing it up in this fashion. He has been an action fighter, a non-stop puncher since he turned professional, but he has never fought a fighter again of Robin Alice caliber. Oh, big nice right uppercut. uppercut Hit him with a backhand or two. But Robin you know, Alice. I'll tell you, to McCullough's credit, he's... Oh, good right hand left hook from McCullough. He answers back every time Robin Alice comes up with a big shot. McCullough yeah, good left hook from McCullough, too. This is better work from him. Good thinking fight from McCullough. This is good stuff. He's boxing better in this round. He's programming his attacks. Oh, low blow again from Robin Alice. Good left hook from McCullough. 
McKinney was on the other side of the ring, couldn't see that low blow with the right hand. McCullough enjoying a very good round here. Although Robin Ellis has also had his moments in this round, but the impressive thing is every time Robin Ellis landed a big punch, McCullough was able to answer back with two or three more of his own. Fans from Ireland enjoying that action. McCullough looking a little more encouraged now in his corner. Very into it. That's Eddie Futch you see in the glasses looking in. McCullough listening closely to what Fudge has to say as we take a look at that last round. Let's see uh, some of the action here. Yeah, turns, turns Robin Alice heads around with that good right hand. Good right hand. Hit him right on the button with that one. This is better work from McCullough. He's using his tactics well, and uh, he's program, programming his attacks better, much better. And he's got to do it with this guy, because this guy is still dangerous, dangerous right up to the last bell. Round eight at Donald Trump's Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, New Jersey. We're in the Mark Giedis Arena. A lot of big name fighters have fought here in this very arena in the past. James Tony, Michael Moore had his wild fight against Kurt Cooper in this ring. Tommy Hearns has fought here. Tonight, the youngster Wayne McCullough from Northern Ireland against the veteran and former world champion Victor Robin Alice. Good left hand by Robin Alice yeah. moving in. And Robin Alas trying now to, to stem the tide a little bit, which appeared to be turning against him at the end of that round, and to come out and establish some momentum here in the beginning of round number eight. Yeah, he's trying to take the play away from McCullough. McCullough had a good last round in the seventh round, and he wants to try and turn the tide in favor of himself here. And, you know, he's, uh, as I say, he's a well-traveled fighter, a lot of fights, and He's, oh, good left hook. He actually stood on his foot there, too, as well. So McCullough comes right back with a right hand to show he's, he's not hurt. But, uh, yeah. So Robin is trying to pull it out in this round, trying to take control again. He just got to hold it together, tuck up nice and tight, and uh, come back with straight, accurate, short combinations. There was, he tried to put together the one-two, which was successful in that last round, but although he landed the left, missed the follow-up right hand, and Robin Ellis is right back in his face. Yeah, good right hand, so straight, right straight through the middle. You don't even have to look for the big right hand. If you just throw it straight, the guy walks onto it. This is we've seen with uh, Ramsey Hassan, same thing, just pop it straight out. Constant pressure by Robin Ellis. Robin Ali is coming on heavy here. This is a big... A big effort for him in this eighth round. This is just a typical Victor Robinales fight. He throws, you, know, you get two non-stop punchers like this, and this is the result. A very good fight, a lot of punches being thrown, and I would imagine a pretty close fight in the judges' scorecards yeah. right now. Yeah, I would say so. Very, very close indeed. Robinales is dangerous again with this big looping uppercuts. We just got to be careful here. Took up. This is a big effort for, from Robin Alice. He's trying hard here. Oh, good right hand again from McCullough. Turns over that right hand. Good shot. Robin Alice a little wild himself, but he throws so many punches, he never lets that bother him. He just winds up the next one and comes from the other side. Yeah, absolutely. He just, uh, just wings him from every different angle. Every good left hook loose. inside by Robin Alice. Then a right hand, and here's a rally by Robin Alice. As we come to the end of round eight, Robin Alice finishing the round strong. strong. Yeah, start of the ninth round. We just go back to the eighth to see a good right hand from McCullough. It was a diff I give that round, that last round to Robin Alice. He made a big effort, and again, He's uh, hit McCullough just on the borderline there. How do you have the fight scored so far, Barry? I have it. I have it. 77-76 to McCullough, and, and going into the ninth round here. But uh, big round for Robin Ali his last time out. He was coming on, tried to step up, set the pace up. So I hope that Wayne's got something left in the tank here. 
Canales uh, trying to continue to put on the pressure and build on that momentum that he seemed to build again in that last round. This is not surprising, McCollum. Talk to him, he knew, his connections knew that he was in for a tough fight here tonight. And he's trying to make a big, huge step up in class, of course, over the fighters that he's oh, hard right from Robin Nollis, and that one stunned McCullough, who now backs off into the ropes, and Robin Nollis moves in. But a pretty good left there by McCullough stopped Robin Nollis in his right back. Came right back there to be hit with that right hand, just went straight in again, landed that right hand again on Robin Nollis, but McCullough looking a little bit jaded, though, right Yeah, now. he's looking tired. Those earlier body shots have, have hurt him. There's no doubt about that. And uh, Robin Alice keeps standing on his toe. <laughs> he's been doing that for the last couple of rounds. Well, he knows all the tricks. Good right hand of the body by Robin Alice. McCullough Good fighting combination back. from Robin McCullough Alice. again. Straight combination. His eyes beginning to lump up McCullough. And Robin Alice coming on strong here in this ninth round. Had a good round eight. He's pouring it on here in round nine, although McCullough's still willing and able to exchange with him. Yeah, and McCullough still snaps back with those combinations. He's just got to try and drive him back with that right hand. It's good stuff from way above our heads here. McCullough firing back, but he needs to land punches. Yeah, he's not actually landing square like Robin Alley's is. Now a double hook there by McCullough, left to the body and into the head. But look at Robin, look at the strange angles he throws from everywhere. He steps Walking in with these in. punches too. He steps, he steps in with them and puts them out. Well, Wayne's, eyes, Wayne's eyes beginning to really lump up and it's uh, beginning to close here. His right eye's beginning to close. He's really feeling the pace. Starting to tire. Nice right hand by Robin Ellis. Tried to bring up the uppercut, and McCullough was able to block that one as it was coming up. And Robin Ellis. Back. He needs to just keep the job up, and keep them hands tucked up nice and tight. He's really tired here, Wayne. He's really beginning to tire. And Robin Ellis is pouring it on. His body shots again are hurting Wayne. This guy is so awkward. And the Brown nine, stay with us. This fight is getting growingly good. the right hand from Robin Alley's in the ninth round. Look at the, the unusual angle he throws that. Got all his weight behind that. And don't he anybody actually started that punch behind, yeah. behind him. Yeah, he actually turned his hand around through behind him. But Wayne needs to step up, the, step up the pace here. I don't know how much left he's got, but he needs to try and take, take control of the fight again. Robin Alley's has snapped it back in the last couple of rounds. And I hope Wayne's got enough left to come back here. Barry McGuigan's scorecard, the fight is dead even right now, having given Robin Alice the last two rounds after McCullough's middle round comeback. Yeah, Wayne needs to just step in with those punches. He's got to step in and, and when he lands those shots, he's got to step in and get his hands tucked up and so he's out of harm's way. But he can't afford to hang out on the outside like this. He can't do that. Good right hand. That's better work from him now. He's got to throw straight punches and then get in close. Robin Alice has been the 12-round distance many, many, many times. Veteran member of eight world championship fights. He only lost the world championship just last year, last March. That's better work from Wayne. He's bobbing and weaving there good. He's got his, got his senses back. He was hurt in the last round. And he's just got to make sure to keep out of harm's way when he lands those straight punches. Fella takes a right hand and has to back off again. And and nods a, a sign of respect almost to Robin Alice. And yeah. at face getting beat up a little bit. Yeah, the eyes, are, the eyes are, in particular the right eyes, beginning to swell up and close. And he was hurt with that shot there. He's just got to try and box this guy. He, he can't afford to trade with him. Straight punches and just get out of the way. Awkward fighters, unorthodox fighters, so difficult to fight. I can remember Floyd Patterson after he fought Oscar Bonavain and said he just couldn't get used to how unorthodox the guy was. Even though he beat Bonavain, he said it was just imp almost impossible because every yeah. time he'd bend to throw a left, the guy would throw a right instead. It was yeah, he's, he's, he's 
someone like Robin Alice is a nightmare to fight. You can't land square punches on them. You know, he keeps nailing you from the usual angles. You think you've got your guard up, and yet he still hits you. It's a, it's a difficult scenario for Wayne, and Wayne's really going to have to dig deep here. He's really tired. Although Robin Alice has 10 defeats in his career, most of those were early in his career. In the last few years, the victories have been, uh, the numbers have been very heavy on the side of the win ledger. That eye is beginning to look bad now on McCullough, yeah, the right, right eye. To close up, and he's got to be very careful here, Wayne. He's tired. He's going to have to, as I said, dig real deep. He trains very, very hard, this kid, and he's going to have to watch it right up. I could hurt him again here. It's those awkward, long winging punches that are hurting him. We go into round number 11, Wayne McCullough, the undefeated Northern Ireland Flash in the black trunks, Victor Robinales, the 31-year-old veteran and former world champion in the aqua trunks. Robinales has been rallying in the last couple of rounds, McCullough gamely hanging in there. Well, Robinales is cut now, blood on his eye. Cut, and it appears about the cut is above the left eye of Robinales. Ryan, seeing a lot of motion here from McCullough, yeah. Barry, at yeah. the start of the 11th round. Yeah, he's just grimaced there from a body shot again, Wayne, but uh, he's got to use his he's got to use his legs and just keep out of trouble with this guy and try and hit him with them straight punches and just keep out left, keep out to the right. But when he's moving, he's got to watch. Because walked on to raise him again there from Avanales. Quite an exchange, and the fans here are, who are overwhelmingly supporting uh, Wayne McCullough here tonight, trying to encourage their favorite. McCullough fighting back. There's some of those combinations we've come to know in the last several months. Watching McCullough advance as a professional. Oh, good right a good McCullough. combination there, the one-two. The right hand followed the left. But then Robinales yeah. right back in his face again. Yeah. Straight into him, yeah. He's got to work from me in again. Just got to try and jump up a gear. I think he's going to he to try and recover here because I am on my own down going into the 11th round. And he's got to try and win these last couple of rounds and win the big. But at the same time, he's got he's got very little left in the tank. He's tired himself. And he's got to try and be strong. And the last this good combination from McCullough. This is good yeah. stuff. He's trying to do exactly what you said. And he is young and he's well conditioned. And he's trying to just suck it up. Yeah, he's just got to suck it up. Got to suck it up and pour it on in the last round. Can't afford to get winged with those punches like that. That's better from him. He's got to tuck up nice and tight. Make this guy miss with those big winging punches. Come back with straight, accurate shots. Robin Ellis. Good right hand from McCullough. Moving forward is Robin Ellis. He caught one on the chin. McCullough, very surprising. He appeared to be fading, Gary, but he has come back with a very good yeah, round. Good right hand again. Left as well. And McCullough's making his presence felt again in this round. Yeah, he's, got, he's still getting tagged, but he's, and he's tired. And it's dangerous the way he's holding his hands down on the way out, on the way out like that. Now, that's dangerous, but uh, you know, if he can suck it up here and win the last round, he's doing well in this round. You never know. McCullough, his right eye closing, still dangerous, firing the right hand. Robin Ellis throwing those winging punches from the side. Crowd really into it now as the bell sounds there. Very close indeed. What a fight, but I think that young man there tonight, Wayne McCullough, has certainly shown that he has a future of careers in this division. No doubt about that. Punch with his last words of advice. Last round coming up, Arthur Mercani going over to take a look. There's Victor Robinales, a kid with Robinales who never really has seemed to quite get the credit for being a, 
an outstanding champion that he was and an outstanding fighter, even in his home country of Mexico for whatever reason. But I guess there's room for only so many idols there. And Julio Cesar Chavez has certainly had that uh, category wrapped up in recent years. Absolutely. Last round, Ravanales and McCullough, here we go. It just turned out to be the fight we, we thought it would be. It's a hell of a fight. These guys have fought their heart out. McCullough's jumped up a huge, huge degrees in the, in the level of competition and he's handled this handled, handled this fight admirably we've seen some boxing skill from him and he's been hurt a few times but he's come back and uh, Robin, Robin Alice has just produced the same sort of fight that he's always done winging those punches from out far and uh, throwing from unusual angles we have close one Rich McCullough is right eye closed Robin Alice bleeding from above the left eye. These two guys will definitely know what profession they are in come tomorrow. You betcha. For, for the next few days, they'll feel real sore. It was probably the second day you feel sore than the first day. McCullough showing surprising mobility here in a late round after That's good a stuff. fight which so many punches have been thrown and landed by each guy. Yeah, his legs are, he's got pretty good defensive skills and people don't realize that. He can box pretty good and uh, he needs to just keep it together here and not get caught with any good club and punches but it's almost impossible when you fight someone like Robin Alice to stay out of the way of punches he's so awkward and so hard to hit and he hits you with as I say from the most unusual of ang angles well, I don't think anyone will punches. argue with a rematch of these two it's been an exciting bout just what we expected here on Prime Championship Boxing tonight and both fighters still throwing the leather here in round 12, the same way they did in round one. Yeah, I think that... Maybe uh, more than they did in round yeah, one. Absolutely, it's been a tremendous fight. These guys have given it all. And the, both of them are pretty tired. Wayne's probably a bit more tired than uh, Robin Alice, but Robin Alice has used that vast experience that he has uh, to make this such an entertaining fight. McCullough's been boxing and moving and coming forward, and this is really good stuff. For those of us who have seen McCullough fight often in the United States, haven't seen this kind of movement in boxing. Yeah. He hasn't had to in the past. That's right. He's, uh, it's good to see him when he has to do it, that he's uh, actually moving around. And he's had to eat a lot of punches to the body in the early rounds. And yet he's, uh, he's come back really well. Final 30 seconds of the fight. Good right hand by Robin Allis, but McCullough answers Comes right back. back with the right hand. Final 10 seconds of the fight. McCullough, who has turned boxer in this round and has done a great job boxing. Absolutely. I think surprising Robin Allis with this final round strategy. And the bell sounds to end the round. Both fighters raise their hands. They may both think they have, in fact, won. We await the decision. It should be very interesting, so stay with us. All right, we're back here on Prime Championship Boxing. We've just seen a red-hot bout, as we expected, between these new two non-stop punchers, Victor Robin Allis, the former world champion, and that youngster there, the exciting Wayne McCullough. What did you think, uh, It's been Barry? a fantastic quantum leap uh, in experience for Wayne McCullough, and he's handled it admirably. He's shown me a whole new set of talents that he's got, and uh, this is a very, very close fight. Let's go up to Jimmy at, ring, at ringside here and uh, hear what, what has happened. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing here at the Trump Taj Mahal, we have a unanimous decision. I will now read the score totals. Judge at ringside, Jack Woodruff scores at 116-110. Vinny Rinon scores at 117-110. Walter Shaw scores at 115 to 113. All three in favor of the winner and still undefeated NABF champion, the Rock Pocket Rocket Wayne McCullough. Well, a unanimous decision victory, ladies and gentlemen, for Wayne McCullough. He wins the unanimous decision, and two of the judges did not have it close. They added 116-110 and 117-110. We saw it a lot closer Much than that. Much closer than that, but uh, delighted for Wayne. He's handled this incredibly well.